In this video, we're going to look at the nature of energy. Now, this is the starting point for a unit long conversation on the topic of thermochemistry. And obviously you're familiar with chemistry, a study of matter and its transformations. This thermo piece comes from a field of physics known as thermodynamics. And what thermodynamics is, is the study of energy transfer and energy stores, right? Any processes that deal with energy falls under the domain of thermodynamics. And so what thermochemistry is looking at is how energy is important in chemistry, right? So how energy is generated through chemical reactions. How, is, how, how can we use chemical reactions to store energy, to generate energy, right? Um, how does energy affect or drive chemical processes? So that's really what we're gonna spend this entire unit talking about. And so we really wanna make sure we have a good foundation in what energy is. And some of you all who have had a strong background in physics or who may be physics majors, uh, this may be old hat to you, but I wanna make sure that everyone's on the same page as far as our understanding of energy before we start to talk, talk about thermodynamics and specifically thermochemistry. But first off, why, why is energy important? Let's kind of establish what the importance is here. So obviously energy is important in a lot of different processes, right? You put fuel or gas in a, in a car or vehicle so that chemical reactions can occur to produce energy so that the car can move, right? Uh, also, the reason that we even eat food, right, is so that we can supply our body with what we need to produce energy so that we can live, so that our, the processes in our body can occur, right? Even on a cellular level, cells need energy uh, to perform their biological processes. So whether you're looking at a micro scale of like a cellular process or you're looking at the macro scale of like why a rocket ship would take off, everything requires energy. Now, what is energy, right? If we're gonna give a formal definition to energy, energy is the capacity for a system to do work or produce heat. So energy is the capacity to do work or produce heat. And specifically, these two processes of heat and work are going to constitute a lot of our discussion about thermochemistry. So we're going to go dive deeper into those in just a few seconds, but I wanna continue kind of giving a base level definition of what energy is, right? Energy, uh, one of the biggest, uh, most important properties of energy is that energy is conserved, right? Similar to how we have the law of conservation of mass, there is a law of conservation of energy. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred, right? Similar to how we have the law of conservation of mass, there's a law of conservation of energy. And energy can be broken down into two components. So if I have this capital E here to represent uh, to the total energy of a system, it can be broken down into kinetic energy components and potential energy components, right? So I'm using Ke and PE respectively for kinetic and potential energy. Now kinetic energy is the energy associated with motion, right? So this is the energy associated with motion while potential energy is the energy associated with position, right? So if you got something at a, at a height, right? That height that, it, that it's at is going to be related to its potential energy. An object in motion will have kinetic energy um, and, and there's a balance between those two. Or if you're thinking about like even on a, a subatomic level, right? We talked about atoms and their structure. An electron moves around a nucleus, right? Um, it has kinetic energy associated with that motion around the nuclei, but its potential energy comes from its position relative to the nucleus, right? So, uh, so there's always these, this balance between kinetic and potential energy um, in, in every single physical scenario. Now, I want to turn your attention to this figure on the right, right? What I have here is two balls. We have ball one and ball two. Now, ball one is at a height, right, greater than ball two. So right now it has a much larger potential energy than ball two. What we're going to envision is that we drop ball one from this height, right, and it rolls down this hill and smacks into ball two. What happens is that it supplies enough kinetic energy to move this ball uh, up, to, up this hill to a bigger height, right? Now, uh, ball two has a greater potential energy than ball one. 
What I want us to do is to think about this scenario within the confines of the law of conservation of energy, right? Um, this ball, one, is starting at a great, great height, right? It rolls down and smacks into ball two, right? It goes to this smaller height, right? If, if we're thinking about this in, in uh, terms of the law of conservation of energy, ball two should have the same potential energy that ball one had, but that's not the case, right? It's going to a much smaller height, so it has less potential energy than ball one started with. So if we're just thinking about this in terms of kinetic and potential energy, the law of conservation of, of energy is, is completely invalidated here. But that's where heat and work come into play. And I'm going to use these two figures on the left here to explain heat and work, right? So first, let's, let's start with heat. Right, so if you've got two objects that are in contact, right, we say that they're in thermal contact with each other, right? Um, this we have this block A and block B, right? So block A is going to have a temperature T A, right, and block B is going to have a temperature T B. And so what I'm going to say here is that uh, block A has a larger temperature. So let's say that it's it's at a higher temperature than block B. So it's a hotter object. What happens with heat is that heat always flows from the hotter object to the colder object. So heat is actually going to flow in this direction, right? There's going to be an energy transfer from block A to block B because there's a temperature difference. And that is the definition of heat. Heat is an energy transfer that results from a difference in temperature, right? So since we have this temperature difference between block A and block B, Block A is going to um, transfer some of that thermal energy from it to block B, right? And that's, that's what we call a heat transfer. Now, what is work, right? So work, I'm going to use this figure. This is a classic example of explaining work, right? You got some guy who is pushing a block, right? So um, this block is going to move some distance, right? We'll say that it moves some distance D. Right, and it moves that distance because there's an applied force. I'm gonna use capital F for force, right? So there's some applied force to that block that allows it to move a certain distance, right? So if you apply a small force to that block, it'll move a small distance or none at all. And if you apply a large force to that block, then it'll move a much greater distance. Right. So now, now that we have these definitions of heat and work, right, with work being some force applied over a distance, let's now re-examine this situation that we have here on the right with these two balls. Now that we have heat and work um, defined, so when this ball is rolling down the hill, right, unless it's an infinitely smooth surface, there's going to be some friction, right, that is going to encounter. So let's say you're rolling it down a grassy hill or something. There's some friction that's applied to that, to that ball, right? So there's going to be some heat transfer to the surface, right? So it's losing some of that initial potential energy through heating, right? And also, it actually does work to move ball two, right? There's going to be an applied force based on the kinetic energy that ball one comes into contact with ball two with. It's going to apply a force, right? That force is applied here to move this ball a certain distance, right? So even though uh, ball two doesn't have the same potential energy that ball one started with, there's a good explanation for that. Some of that energy is lost due to heating, right? Because of the friction. And also some of that energy is lost because it's used to do work on ball two, right? So this does actually fit with the law of conservation of energy. Now, thinking about this in terms of uh, potential energy and kinetic energy versus heat and work. This brings up a very foundational uh, uh, topic in thermodynamics, and that's the idea of a state function. Right, so think of, to, in order for us to understand a, th a state function, let's think about the difference between potential and, uh, energy in this case versus heat and work. Now, I mentioned that if the surface was infinitely smooth, the ball one would lose no energy due to heat, right? Um, and if it comes in with more kinetic energy, it'll do more work against ball two, right? So inherently, heat and work are actually dependent on the path that ball one takes, right? If it, uh, if it drops from a greater height, 
there will be more work done on ball one. It might move a, a greater distance. If the surface is more rough, it'll lose more heat. So it's very dependent on the path. But the potential energy is exactly the same. As long as this height and this height remain exactly the same, regardless of how rough the surface is or how smooth it is or whether ball two is even there or not, that change in potential energy is going to be the same. So it is the potential energy is not pathway dependent. And so what a state function is, is any function that is independent of the path taken, right? So any function that is independent of the path taken. Right, we also say that a state function or state property only depends on the present state of the system, right? So that's another easy way to remember what a state function is. It only depends on the present state of the system. And you've actually already encountered a state function in the ideal gas law in the last unit, right? We looked at some gas expansions and compressions, right? Um, or, you know, different, you know, heating up a gas sample and whatnot. And you can just take the initial, uh, the final temperature minus the initial temperature in those cases, or the final volume minus the initial volume to get that change. It doesn't matter how the gas expands or how you heat it. Um, as long as that final and initial temperature are the same, um, you can get the difference. So that's the idea of a state function, anything that is uh, independent of the path taken. So to kind of drive this point home, I wanted to do an example. Um, and this example, so this is a map of the United States. Right. And let's say hypothetically you and one of your friends wanted to go from Georgia to North Carolina. Now, the average elevation in Georgia is 600 feet and the average elevation in North Carolina is 700 feet. Right. Regardless of how you go from Georgia to North Carolina, that elevation change is going to be exactly the same. You're going to have a, a net change of 100 feet in elevation gain. Right. But let's say that you take two different paths to get there. Let's say that you're only interested in getting to North Carolina as quickly as you can, right? So you're here in Georgia and you just go straight through South Carolina to get to North Carolina, right? So that's your distance, right? You, you just go straight from Georgia to North Carolina. You just want to get there. But let's say that your buddy wants to make a road, a road trip out of it, right? So they're going to go, okay, I'm going to start here in Georgia. I'm going to go to Alabama, Tennessee, go around to Kentucky, a little bit through West Virginia, and then go to uh to north carolina right so we'll call his distance uh d2 we'll call your distance d1 now clearly um your distance is going to be less than the uh the distance of your buddy right so d1 is going to be less than d2 even though you both end up in the same place, the distance that you travel to get there is going to be different based on which path you take. Whereas the elevation change is going to be exactly the same. Even your friend who went all the way from Georgia through Alabama and took this meandering route, they're still going to have the same total elevation change that you have going from Georgia to North Carolina, but your distance was much less. The distance necessary to get to the two state between the two states is different, right? So elevation change would be a state function. Doesn't matter what path you take, elevation change is going to be the same. Distance traveled would not be a state function because it's going to depend on the path that you took to get there, right? Same thing here with potential energy. Potential energy is a state function, right? Because it doesn't matter the path you take. Um, as long as the initial and final are the same. Whereas heat and work are not state functions because they depend on the path. Okay, so that's just a quick introduction to energy. Um, like I said, the whole goal here isn't to go through thermodynamics and grave details to give us enough information so that we'll be able to understand the basics of thermochemistry.